Well, hello everyone. This is Brother D, and it is a beautiful day outside. I should be flying, however, both the airplanes I rent are currently down for maintenance. So, I'm here at the Central Kentucky Wildlife Refuge near Danville, Kentucky, and I'm going to be hiking up to a secluded spot I know about so I can share something that's been on my heart and mind. Today I want to talk to you about something that's related to aviation missions. I remember a number of years ago how I watched a video produced by the North American Mission Board. And in that video it portrayed a director of missions who would go out and visit his churches using his own personal airplane. He was in the American West and the churches were separated by vast distances. And so air transportation made it a whole lot quicker to get from point A to point B. Well, I remember I was really inspired by that video, and I could see myself doing something like that one day. Fast forward about 15 years, and I watched a movie called Mission Air, which portrayed a really similar concept for ministry. It was about a husband, Matt, and his wife, Diane, and Matt was an airline pilot, and he owned an aviation maintenance shop. And any money that he got from those two businesses, he would put that into his wife's ministry. Diane actually flew her own personal airplane into Mexico to do medical missions. So when we normally think of aviation missions, we envision the person who flies for an organization. The organization provides the aircraft that the person flies, and the individual receives a paycheck from that organization or is responsible for raising his or her own support. Rarely do we think of the person providing their own airplane and paying for the expenses out of his or her own pocket, yet this is a really viable option for ministry and possibly one that is more cost effective. So what do I mean by being more cost effective? Well, if someone wants to fly for an organization, that organization usually requires a certain level of certification. Usually being a commercial pilot or having an airframe and power plant technician certification. Well, to reach that level of certification requires extensive education and training, not to mention a whole lot of money, sometimes up to $100,000 worth of training. So since most mission organizations require pilots to raise their own support, you have individuals who have $100,000, maybe more of debt, and they have to raise their own support. So that puts any potential mission pilots in a really tough spot. But what if a person could do aviation missions with just a private pilot license? Something that costs around $10,000 instead of $100,000. Well, it's actually possible, but it requires a different mindset. It requires an adjustment in the way we view aviation missions. So in flying for an organization, that agency usually owns and supplies the aircraft that you fly, and you're responsible for raising your own support and that money is funneled through the organization which cuts you a paycheck and because you receive a paycheck the FAA views that as compensation which uh, in their eyes means that you are a commercial pilot. The FAA rules go so far as to say that even if you fly someone else's airplane and you don't receive any money it's still considered compensation because the flight hours can be logged in your logbook and those are free flight hours. Simply put, flying someone else's airplane for mission work, one in which the use of and even flight time is donated, requires a commercial pilot's license, period. But what if you own the airplane? Well, if you fly someone somewhere and money is exchanged, well, you're operating as a commercial pilot, so that won't work. So the FAA says that cost sharing is allowed, meaning that if you and your passengers pay their pro rata share of the expenses of the flight, it's not considered compensation. Simply put, if there are four people on the plane, the pilot and three passengers, and they split the cost four ways, then you're golden. Well, maybe not. So the catch is everyone on board has to have the same purpose for the flight. Let's say you live in Haiti and three missionaries 
have contacted you to take them to a certain village in Haiti. They agree to pay their quarter share and you agree to pay your quarter share. This sounds like a viable option to pay for a mission flight, but this won't cut it with the FAA. So the FAA would see the three missionaries as having the same purpose, but not the pilot. You see, the missionaries had planned that trip months in advance. They had come together with a common purpose of going to that village. But then, you as the pilot, you're only motivated to go there later after they give you a phone call, and your motivation is you benefit from getting to fly, and you benefit by having a portion of that flight compensated or paid for. So the question is, how can a private pilot do aviation missions? Well, first of all, it helps to own your own airplane. And secondly, how you make your living and how you receive your income matters the most. And here's where having a different mindset happens. So most pilots want to be paid to fly. With all people, it seems that getting paid for what we do gives us a sense of worth. It makes us feel appreciated for our services. But what if we could still pilot an airplane on a regular basis, yet we didn't get paid as a pilot? Would we somehow lose our worth as a pilot? Would we suddenly lose that sense of accomplishment? So if someone wants to fly an airplane in aviation missions as a private pilot, the best way to do so without violating any FAA rules is for that person to acquire their support from something other than piloting an aircraft. For example, the doctor who has a passion for medical missions would use his or her medical income to own an airplane and pay for the expenses of the flight. Or if someone wants to be involved in full-time ministry, that individual could be a missionary or a pastor in some remote location and own their own aircraft for transportation and for travel. Just be sure that the expenses are out of pocket and no reimbursement is being sought. So what if you're being paid as a pastor or a missionary instead of as a pilot? Does that make your flying any less satisfying or rewarding? Or does it somehow not qualify as aviation missions? Our idea of aviation missions has been confined to a really small box. This video is intended to encourage people to think outside the box of our traditional mindset while still trying to remain inside the box of FAA regulations. But if you have a private pilot license and you have a desire to use your own personal aircraft for ministry, or maybe even a rented aircraft, then go ahead and do it. You can travel to a mission site, you can transport people and even transport supplies, just so long as you do not receive any compensation for your services. I'll be sure to provide some links in the description below that detail the FAA's definition of compensation and hire. Once again, this is Brother D, and thanks for watching this video. And if any ideas come to mind, be sure to include them in the comments section below. And also be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video.